I love about this town. I came from my normal moonlit walk, which I did last night, and while I was doing it last night, I was snapping pictures and sending them to my oldest, kind of like he was walking along with me. And this stage behind me was empty and quiet. Now, the name of this stage is Friendship something and others. There's a ton of people. There's a sign over there that says, do your selfie. So. Take a selfie. While videoing. I don't know who this band is. All I know is that my music stopped when I was way down that way. I was on the other side of that bridge. And my music stopped. Because I was taking a picture of the sunset. Oh, guys, you guys gotta see this. Hold on, if it's still up. Let me see if it's still up. Oh, and it is. Catch it just in time. I think, maybe. There's drawbridges here. Hold on, we get down here, guys. I'm almost when all I do is tap my screen. You guys couldn't see how beautiful that sunset was because there's too much of a glare. But I mean, if you take your perspective, just a little bit. And you might get... I us see, can we get the whole... Thank you very much. Ah, there we go. Thank you. you might get the whole image. Oh, but you didn't because you still can't see. I'm in a lot of pain today, guys. The shirt that I have on underneath the sweater says, the shirt turns black when I'm in pain. And it's a black shirt with okay, white writing. It also yeah. says Ehlers Danos Syndrome. I'm in a lot of pain today. Well, the nice thing about being back so I messaged one of the people the who have given me a hard time about my red one. I said, look, man, I've made it eight days without it. I've been fine. But today, my body hurts so bad that I can barely move. And I really can. I can barely move because I'm, I'm dying today. But I had stuff I had to do. I had to get up and move. You can't just stay sitting all the time. And if I hadn't gotten up and moved... Well, New York City weather report, so it's really about all of us. It's about my experience after New York City weather playing a concert report. for New York the in the aftermath of 9-11. Oh, in the aftermath of 9-11, he Seeing firsthand how the country really rallied together. How the country really rallied together. In ways together. I've never seen. In ways in none of us had ever seen. Never seen since. And we haven't seen it since. Out of that attack, that atrocity, I think we saw the best of ourselves. And we did see the best of ourselves our, after 9-11. And then we turned around and lost it. All of it. Support each other. And you guys, there's this. I still think we got a lot of that. We turn off the news. Set up for a wedding. Look how beautiful. Look how beautiful their wedding's going to be. This song speaks to that, that so time. It speaks to the time when we were all together. Trying to work together to go Whoa. forward after a tragedy. Yeah. 
my best of friends. All my best of friends. Sit back, New York City. Seriously, I never planned to come down this bar, but hey, her music. You gotta follow the music. I mean, guys know I follow the music. I mean, I know I talk a lot. The fuck? I mean, I listen to the music all the time. I let it lead me. I let it guide me. Oh, look at that. But now I got a free hand. Damn. So I worked a little bit. I mean, when I didn't plan to. I came down further and I walked farther than I meant to. Whole bunch of people watched me fucking causing a fool of myself. Whole bunch of people still act like I'm, I mean, like they're just walking by. They ain't paying no damn good attention to me. I'm not doing that. Dancing into my music, into my music. That was a beautiful smell, wasn't it? 
Look, I got an unexpected surprise tonight when I came for my nightly. My typical nightly walk that I do almost every night since I've been here. So I come down here to this river and I watch that beautiful, oh, let me change it again, beautiful sunset. And I don't bother nobody. I listen to my music. I do my thing with my replacement riser. It replaced itself. I don't know how to sell it. But picked up some trash. These are all things I do every day when I walk around this town. Pick up trash, listen to music, act a fool, walk. Regardless if I'm hurting or not, I just walk. Wait a minute, guys. I'm going to show you guys my shirt if I can set this up right stuff away I apologize hey Sue there's the orange one there's the black one hey Bubby there's Winnie Pooh and inside this hey, is my Christ off my crucifix that fell off and my angel my brother gave me to carry to carry with me also just had to find a different way I do have a shirt that tells you when I'm in pain. My one thing don't want to stay on tonight. Guess I don't need it. Uh, I put my bag on backwards though. That's okay. I can fix that. Walk around Michigan supporting Ohio State like that. Sorry. But yeah, this shirt turns black. I'm in pain. I'm in pain. Anybody want to go sailing? Sail by AWA Nation is a special song to me. And it's like my reset song. When I listen to it, it kind of just, I breathe with it. And the way I breathe brings me back into reality. Uh, brings me back down to a call. I haven't needed to listen to it as much, but I still do. It's just a good song. <laughs> I mean, blame it on my ADD. ADHD. Blame it all on my ADHD. Other people would say it's my bipolar, but I'm seriously, I'm telling you guys, it's not bipolar. But they can say what they want. You know, those doctors know everything. They didn't know what was wrong with me until I was 30, but they do know everything, right? It wasn't even a doctor. It was a nurse practitioner who figured it out. I think he was studying nurse practitioner. I'll turn my hammer. There's people walking by me. People don't like to be on camera. I had a guy tell me earlier when I was just trying to take a picture of the sunset of... I'm trying to get it. All those colors. But I mean, guys look at me. You can tell I'm in pain today. I ain't hiding it. I don't feel good. So today, knowing that I needed to slow my brain down to a manageable pace to keep up with my body that couldn't keep up with my brain today, I had to take a riddle. It wasn't an option. It wasn't a, I wanted to. It was, I was really trying not to take it, but I know that if I take it, see this bridge goes up too. It's 
It was too low down. I know this bridge goes up because I've driven across this bridge with my friend. I want a boat. Ain't no one go boating. I want to go on a pontoon. On the pontoon. Making waves and catching rays up on the roof. Jumping off the back, don't act like you don't want to. Party in slow motion. Out here in the open. It's an older song. It's been out for yeah, at least eight years or nine, seven, eight years. Yeah, Brent. See, sun is going down right there. Right there. Make it closer to the water and be quiet. Here, you hitting that rock shot. Some nights I don't even need my music because the world makes music. There was one night that my MP3 player was dead and I didn't have any high speed. My phone just wasn't playing music for me. But I, I listened, there's a bar down the street and they were jamming. So I walked down that way. Well, I walked past the bar, not in it, past it. I listened to their music for a minute, but by the time I made it to them, they were, they were not listening to music anymore. The song had ended. But then I followed the music like I did tonight. I got a free concert. Most of it, though, was by nature, not nurture. Crickets in the water, the geese and the ducks quacking as they go over the sky. The silence that night. Silence is golden sometimes. And so, well, today has been one of these days, though, that I'm, I'm again sitting with my ghosts. I have to sit with them. You don't have an option, guys. You have to sit with the ghosts every once in a while. Put my drink right there. I'm not drinking water tonight. I needed some flavor. But, um, most seriously, every once in a while, you guys got to sit with your ghosts. Well, my ghost today happened to be my friend, Robbie Hammond. Robert Lee. Remember, I can talk about him because he's gone. Listen, I don't have anything bad really to say about him. He made a mistake. He partied when he shouldn't have, but it didn't, he didn't OD. It turned toxic in his system. I'll talk to his wife. See, what the saddest part about this whole entire story was, Okay, he had been off work and he was partying and he did some stupid shit. And the first night was okay. The second night, man. That's Sunday morning. His daughter went in again. She was sent to go wake him up. Wake daddy up. Sorry, my necklaces have been tucked in, I forgot. I don't normally keep them tucked in. But now they're a tangled mess, so. Uh, uh, well, apparently my glasses wanted to go down too. Seriously, my necklaces are a tangled mess. Do you see this? How will I ever get them unknotted? I have a feeling they will come unknotted on their own. They did it earlier. Might have to play with it a little bit, but. Um, My dad's wrapped around it. My sons are wrapped around it. Uh, it's a lanyard, though, to the dispensary that I've been visiting up here. I won it one day when I went to go and pick up some medicine. I mean, it's recreational up here because I don't have a prescription card, but it's still medicine for me. I don't care what they classify it. I classify it as medicine. You guys see why I come down here every night. And I do mean like every night that I possibly can. I'm, I'm down here. And so my brain, I'm gonna go for my walk. 
sometimes he joins me. Sometimes I come on my own. It's not the only place I come to, but I mean, this is where I come to for sunset because I mean, come on. Sunset on the water. And I love water. Anybody knows me knows I love being close to water. I have to be close to water. And I can do the dry heat too, but I do like water. It makes me calmer. Super. You put me in that desert situation and uh, all hell breaks loose. Like literally all hell breaks loose. You put me into the middle of hell and I become a completely different person. And I know I'm going to have to restart my phone or something tonight because it is acting funky, but I can see that it's not keeping up. Oh, guys, is this clock tower? Where's it at? Hold on. See that clock tower? Right. 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 Well, the clock tower's right there. I can't find it with my finger because I'm not... Yep, see, it's, it, I looked and it's still off. No, that one. That clock tower. My friend said that you can climb to the top of that. Now, so, after my son had graduated from boot camp, the next day we went to a state park down there by Paris Island. And they have a lighthouse. Well, now, at his graduation, I was in a wheelchair. I was too tired, I was too weak, I was too, I just didn't have it in me that day to walk around a military base. I didn't know if it was flat, if it was hilly, if it was what it was. Mostly it was flat. But I was in a wheelchair. My stepdad was in a power chair. My mom used her walker. Do you understand that? My stepdad, I get it, he's got bad knee, he's got bad heart, he's got, he's got all kinds of stuff. My mom was using a walker and I was in a wheelchair. And nobody questioned it. My son helped push me. My now ex fiance helped push me. I tried to do it on my own, but my shoulders were just too weak. Well, then, after I watched that boy walk across that parade field, and then that next day we went to the White House and I found a chicken climb to the top of it for like $2. I, I was on. I was game on. I was doing it. And my ex, you now he said he was going to try to, but then he seen what those stairs looked like. That's who that is. What's that sound? I'm trying to remember the name of the song. That's who that guy is. He's a big name. When you only got one life to live. Ah, he's like an, it's not a genre I usually listen to, but I like this. 33 for a moment. Wow, well, I'm 39. I was 33, and 33 I was, meeting my now ex fiance. Get ready. Uh, I met him when I was 32. Get ready to turn 33. No, I met him when I was 33. Get ready to turn 34. Ah, I can't remember. 2016. We met in 2016. He was born in 83. So. 2013, I would have been 30. 2016, I would have been. 33, yeah. My name was 33. We were together for five years and nine months. And we both said today when we were text messaging that we did have some great times. I told him that it would be easier if I could hate him. He knows me. You're not with somebody for that long and you don't know them. And for both of us, this was like a 
really long chapter in our book that we both get to write that chapter together. But he told me the other day, Jessica can't be who you need anymore. And he's right. And I can't be what he needs anymore. I need to go be me. I have been the daughter. I've been the mom. The mama. I have been Jess, Jessie, Jessica. Jessie Ann. Auntie Jessie Ann. I've been Auntie. I've been Auntie Mama. I've played all these roles, guys. And like I said, when me and my friend were talking one day, and I said, I don't even know who I am anymore. I've played all these roles. The daughter, the student, the teacher, the mother, the preacher. But the thing is, they're not roles. They are who I am. I am Jess, Jesse, Jessica, Auntie Jesse, Annie, Aunt Jess, Auntie Mama, Mama. Uh, but without Mama comes along, Ma, Mom, Mother, Mama, Mommy. And every one of those titles comes a different persona. I name my emotions. Jess is my Joe. Well, she's my, I don't know what she is. She's what people like. Jessie, everybody hates. Unless you're the one I'm defending. And, but even then, people think I can take it a little too far. And Jessica is, well, that's all of me. But at the same time, you have to add in those other roles. Mom, daughter, student, teacher, therapist, cook, chauffeur, nurse, doctor. Ooh, I've been called Dr. Cook too. By Miss Allen and by my auntie. She said I wouldn't even dare question your knowledge with medical. I wouldn't either. I've been in enough hospitals. I've seen enough doctors. I've spent more of my life going to and from a doctor's appointments than I ever cared to even think about. Ever. And I'm not done. And somebody else asked me today through Messenger, how do you take care of everything when you can't make money? I said, well, I don't take care of everything. I have found that most things, when are needed, get provided. I kept asking for cook made for food made with love. I get it every day. My friend comes home from work. He works all night, and he's gonna make himself food anyways. So he just makes an extra portion for me. Well, normally he would eat it later, but he's feeding me and stuff. But he loves to feed people. That's how he shows his love through food. He's got other ways he shows his love to. But he throws he seriously shows it through his food. Because it is damn good. And you can taste when somebody's made something with love or when they've made it with just pure hatred. It's like the night before my ex was getting all his teeth surgically removed. He was gonna go under anesthesia. He wasn't allowed to eat after midnight. He wanted biscuit and gravy. I had no problem with it. He started the meat for me because I'm not particularly kind on touching raw meat. I really don't like it, but I will. If I have to, I will. I just don't like it. I've touched so much of it. I just don't want to. Remember, guys, I don't really... I'm burned out on cooking. You can look at me until I don't feel good today. I mean, I've attempted to put myself together, but even when you attempt to put yourself together when you're falling apart, well, you still fall apart. But, see, his one son was supposed to be learning and watching. And I walked out of the kitchen for a minute to go, just because it was at that point where you didn't have to stand over top of it. You just needed to get up every couple minutes and go stir it. So I went into the kitchen or into the living room to get a cigarette and sit down. Maybe I think I might have might went down to sit down and smoke a bowl for a minute because I felt about like I do today. I hurt. And I'm emotionally drained. And I'm exhausted. And I see my friend tonight said, just take it easy. Hopefully maybe tomorrow you can rest. 
Yeah, but tomorrow we're gonna go out to his mom's house. I, I get to meet his mom. We're gonna have to stop at his sister's house and, and drop off some birthday presents and pick up the other two kids, and then go to his mom's house. And there's horses and there's four wheelers and there's, it's a farm. I love farmland. So yeah, I will be resting tonight and I will be resting tomorrow during the day until he gets up after he comes home and goes to sleep to go speed. No, that's just a little one. That's just a little uh, fishing boat. Sounded like a speedboat coming up on me though. Perspectives. You gotta actually look sometimes. I see that's what people don't keep understanding. I watch everything. Everything. I watch how people act. I watch how they talk. I can tell you if my friend is my my friend messaging me or if it's somebody else. So I have a friend who got hacked. And the way they were pushing, and the way they were talking to me, and the way they were acting, well, I, I knew it wasn't my friend because I've known this girl, this woman, since I was seven. I was good friends with her sister. You now, but see, what happened was that G2 was supposed to be paying attention just to learn how to do something. Just learn. He wasn't actually expected to do anything. But I think I had asked him if he would stir it while I was in the other room. And what this child did... Sorry, I did not go up on it. What this child did was took the knob for the stove burner and flipped it around to where off was on and on was off. He turned the heat up so high that it ruined his dad's last real meal for three months. You know, this has only been two months ago. His dad still doesn't have his big teeth yet. And he's going to feel so much better when he does. It's going to give him so much confidence. So we are we give you so much confidence. So much, so much confidence. I know. I know for a fact. I've lived it. Now you had to have yours a little step further than mine, but I've lived it. I've had them all taken out of the top. I had to, I had to wait three months. But at least you don't have your bottom teeth rubbing into your gums every time you close your mouth. That shit hurts. I've lived it. Yeah, but see guys, I watch and I pay attention. And that child turned that knob around and he maliciously hurt his father thinking he was going to hurt me. No, he made me mad. One, I was putting love into that food. I just walked away for a moment. So that his daddy could have a nice meal before he ended up having to not be able to eat solid foods for the better part of three months. Now he's getting there now, but I mean, it's not easy to, buy, to eat solid foods when you don't have any fucking teeth. You can't chew them if you don't have teeth. Yeah, we bite into stuff. That's the type of shit that I keep talking about that nobody knows what was happening in the house because nobody was around except for the neighbor. And the one set of neighbors. Hi, sweetheart, if you're watching, I miss you. I miss you. Not that mean person you became that day. I miss the nice version of me. Told you. That song about driving around in the car and that's me and you. And I love that you. I love when you're you. But you get around other people and you become somebody else. Why you gotta make things so complicated? Why can't we all just be friends? But now I don't know if it's fixable. I still have your bracelet. I just don't wear it right now. I don't need it. I'm not in a place where I need to walk around saying F you to everybody. Music's still playing.
I love you guys. All of you. You guys can all be super sweet, super kind, super nice, super courageous, super, just super. And you also can be super assholes or super bitches. We all can when we're pushed past our boundaries. Yeah, I try to make it as obvious as possible how I feel, how I'm acting. I've apologized to people before because, hey, I'm having a bad day. Please, go easy on me. Like today, I'm having a bad day. Please just go easy on me. But see, that other person asked me today how I take care of them. I'm like, I don't. Everything's provided. Now, I've been waiting for four and a half years for something that I am eligible for. It should have been granted to me without the first denial. But see, our U.S. government, especially Social Security, now they want to go ahead and give it to a couple of my other friends. I have two male friends who are going, yeah, well, I've applied for it, and I'm getting it like that. I'm happy for you guys. That's not how, that's not what I want to come across as when I, I come across as, I know I come across as jealous. Because I kind of am, man. I've been fighting this battle, but because I look healthy, I look normal, I look... But come on, guys. The shirt turns black when I'm in pain, and the shirt is black all the time. It has white writing. It is not a white shirt with black writing. It is a black shirt. The shirt turns black when I'm in pain. I could wear this every day. But I have Social Security telling me that I need to go out and I need to keep on working. But I can't get a job because I'm a liability. That's our U.S. government for you. Well, yeah, I know there's worse places, but man. But if I had a wing wong between my legs, yeah, kids, I'm pulling it out. Wing Wong's going hoo-hoo's and they make wah wahs and if you all make wah wahs before you're freaking ready, I'm putting my foot up your butt. Yeah, and my nieces will tell you that, that ain't gonna happen. I will be upset. I have multiple nieces that had kids before they were ready and that they, they're mom, the rock and the mom thing, so good job, girls. And to the, the dads that are around for them. My one niece got married to her high school speaker junior high school, I believe. I think they were only like 13 or 14 when they started dating. She had her first kid at 16. She's got four and three boys and a girl. Oh, them boys. Gotta love them boys. Seriously, my food is provided. My shelter is usually provided. My clothing is usually provided. It's all gifts. I try to earn it by helping out. I, I try to earn the shelter by helping keep it clean. I try to earn the food by cooking it or doing the dishes. I try to earn the respect that I'm being given with those gifts. But that does not mean that because you have something to hold over me, like shelter, food, rides, that you get to treat me like I am a nobody. Because I am here to tell you, everybody. Sorry, it's a beautiful song playing. It's time to fly. I'm not that nice. It's not easy to be any of us, though. I love that song. Now I know who it is. I'm so glad I hung around because I couldn't remember the name of the other song. Now I, I, I can find them. Because it's not easy to be me. It's 
not easy to be any of us. Even heroes have the right to bleed. And cry, and scream, and throw a fucking temper tantrum sometimes. Because you know, heroes get tired of trying to be heroes for people who don't want them. It's like Hitchcock. It really isn't like an Hitchcock. People scream for help, help me, help me. Yeah, but the kind of help that you're wanting isn't the kind of help I'm willing to give, guys. So don't ask me for my help if you don't want it. If you want it, well, I'm glad to give it. That's all I got. You want my help, I'll give it in a heartbeat, anytime. I will fight people for you die for you. Many of you know that. I will take on your monsters and mine. It's who I am. I am Jess, Jesse, Jessica. But I really love the name that my uh, MJ gave me. She said, well, you are Grace. I said, but wait, Angel's been around for a really long time. My nickname back in junior high and high school was Angel between the, me, her, and another friend of ours. One of us was Brett, one of us was Angel. I think one of us was bitch. <laughs> we all had our own little nicknames. We all had our own little things that represented us. Mine has always been Angel. I said, uh, Angel's been around for a really long time. We forgot about her. Put the two together. When I am all together, I am Angel Grace. I know it sounds crazy, almost like I got multiple personalities by me, but when we have multiple emotions, don't we all have multiple personalities? Remember I told you, it's like Jekyll and Hyde. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Mr. Hyde was his intensified emotions. It was his dark side, but it wasn't even a dark side if you got to know more of the story. He came out as mean and angry at first and wanting justice but as he evolved, you could find out what actually was going on. Yes, it was his dark side. We all have one. There is dark in everybody and there is light in everybody. I don't, I don't care who you are. Nobody is completely evil. I know we say some people are, but I mean, if they were completely evil, how would they have ever sucked us in? They suck us in when they're good, don't they? those of you that you know I haven't been able to walk up and down stairs like a normal person. Like a normal person for the first time in this year has been the first time in many years that I've been able to go up and down stairs like a normal person. Because before I had to do one leg up and you pull the other one and you do the first leg again and another one. First leg again and another one first like again and another one and, and when you have multiple stairs like now that was a short staircase it was only like what maybe five seven five to seven stairs to go from that river walk for me to head back towards the neighborhood I live in just stay in am in I don't know it's really funky with addresses and where I'm at and how things are technically my permanent address is still back down there, but I'm not there, technically I'm homeless, but I'm not, but I am, I don't have my things up here with me, they are down there, but it's expensive to do those truck rides, 
my way back last time was a bus. It was a fun ride, though. I, my next big ride I, I want to take, I want to do a train. I want to go across the country and go see my baby if I can. I miss my kids. All of them. I do, I miss them all. So if any of my kids are watching this. Oh, I just killed a man. Put a gun against his head. Pulled the trigger, now he's dead. Michael! I've had just begun. Ah, oh, baby. It's your song. So my, my middle boy has this habit when he's home, he, he'll just bust in your door and he'll start singing this song. Mean to make you cry If I'm not back in time again tomorrow Carry on, carry on Well, maybe that's what I'm doing, Mommy's carrying on. Because you're not here. You're on the other side of the country. You are a two-day trip for me. It is not too late, though. Because you haven't killed a man yet. I mean, you are in the military. It's plausible. You are front lines. It is plausible. You might get sent somewhere. There is all that shit going on over in Russia and China. and Putin is still a dick. I don't really know what's China's deal. More power. They always want more power. More, more, more. Give me more. Give me more. That greed. Oh, that greed is just so high in this world today, ain't it? So glad for that free concert. But I wanted to talk to you guys too, so I wanted to do this away from the house tonight. When I get home, I'm probably going to turn the TV on. I'm going to actually, I'm going to warm up my food. I might make another pot of coffee. Yeah, I know it's late, but yeah, I'm an insomniac anyways, but it doesn't matter. I need that stimulant to calm me down, remember? That's what the Ritalin for. Now, obviously, I'm still not calm because uh, I'm not walking this city. About to walk past that clock tower. I mean, I could turn right here. I could go down to the next block. I could turn that way. I could go that way. I, I have options. One will take me closer to the house. One will take me further away. If you guys don't know, I'm walking in the middle, like, well, not in the middle, but I, the sidewalk was over there, and I was actually on the road. I wasn't even walking on the sidewalk. There is a sidewalk. There's a sidewalk on that side of the street. Well, yeah, to get to my house, you gotta go this way. Yeah, but I'm gonna get up here by the Taco Bell, and I'm gonna stop filming, because at that point, I'm gonna be at 50 minutes or so. I might not make it even that far, but I'm trying to get this clock tower in here, but I'm walking awfully slow, guys. I will definitely cut this off by 60. I know you guys don't really like the long ones, but... It was a little nice surprise tonight walking around. It is nice trying to do this and not feel like I am completely alone. Because... Can you see my shuttle? Hey, the guy's coming. I am, literally. Oh, there she is. Hello, gorgeous. Here's my darkness. My shadow. My reflection. See, you know, I got really good at dealing with my reflection and my shadow. We dance. Okay. The way the house is set up, if I turn the interior light on, the, the front door's glass. I can see my reflection in it, and then it shines out onto the towards the sidewalk down off the porch, and it gives me one hell of a shadow. And when the music's playing, if you go along with it, you can dance with your reflection and your shadow, and it helps you deal with your demons. That's why I'm calm? Because that's what I've been doing lately.
safe for me to walk right now because this car coming up has a stop sign. So. Look at this building, man. It's kind of creepy looking. But that freaking clock tower. I really wish I could actually get it where you could see the. But I can't. Remind you of an old castle. I think it's actually an old church that they've turned into like the community center, the government building, I guess. What we would consider a government building. I guess that's where you would go to get your food stamps and medical card and stuff for up here. I think that's what he told me it was. He said his sister would know more about it than I have. I just haven't asked. She's been busy. She's working. And then when she comes home, she spends time with the babies. She takes care of my dog. Because I'm, uh, I can't physically take care of him right now. So she's fostering him for me. Hey. My friend is helping out with the dog food. He's a sweet person. Because he likes Jack. Jack's a cute dog. He's a sweet dog. Look. Clock tower. McDonald's and Toxic Hell Taco Bell. Sorry, I called it Toxic Hell since I was since I worked there. I know exactly how long it takes me to walk across this. I know exactly how long it takes these cars to back to me coming down here. I don't worry. I pay attention. There went that car. Here's gonna come another. Watch, wait, 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 wait. Bam. And I wasn't even looking. I can hear them. I see when I have my headphones in and I am not listening, I look. I pay attention. I keep my phone down. And there's sometimes I can even walk across and text at the same time because there's no cars coming. Mm. Somebody's leaking something. Yeah, my ex would know exactly what that smell is. It smells kind of like either transmission fluid or oil. Like they're burning it. It's very strong. I bet it's over at McDonald's because there's no cars here at Taco Bell. There's also not that much trash right here at Taco Bell either. But if you walk down there to McDonald's and you see the side of the street, you know, you see the street? Well, this street's clean. So, but... I am going to come to this corner. I'm going to set my stuff down for a second. I'm going to do my goodbyes because this is where the corner that ah, from this point, I don't know if I can trust some people to know what direction I go in. Do I go left, right, straight? Do I turn around and I go back the other direction? And do I go down one of these streets and turn down another one? And it sucks that I feel like I can't trust people with my location. Yeah, but I can tell you I walk all over these neighborhoods. There's a park that way. There's a community garden that way. There's a dispensary that way. Right on the other side of McDonald's. Like a half block down. There's a side place that direction, that direction. Okay, but from this point where I'm at right here, standing behind this Taco Bell, Taco Bell that I, I've said many times now, I, I walk past all the time. I'm going to go ahead and end this. Because unfortunately, no, I don't trust people. I love you, but love and trust do not go hand in hand. They should but they don't. They're supposed to. You're supposed to be able to trust the people you love. I unfortunately cannot trust the people I love. Now, I can love you, but I can love you from afar. Until you earn my trust.
See, because the problem isn't that I needed to prove myself to everybody. The problem now is people need to start proving themselves to me before I'm going to let you in my life. If you tell me you're going to do something, please do it. I try to do the exact same back. If I tell you I will babysit, well, I will babysit. If I tell you I'll help you clean, I will help you clean. If I tell you I'm going for a walk, I'm going for a walk. If I tell you I'll do something for you, I will 90% 90, 90 of the time do it. Now, but see, sometimes people want me to do things for them that have nothing to do with my part on why they didn't get done. So like that deal that I made with my ex's parents that they wanted a bunch of work done. Knew I didn't drive. That was what that money was supposed to be for. to help get me back my license. But when it came to a bigger number, well, you wouldn't know. Not even uh, find out a payment plan and we'll work it out. Find out, figure something out. You know, we'll help you make the first payment down on it. Nope. Automatically. Nope. Can't do that one. And I know they had their own plans, and I know it was their money, but they offered. They said, come down here, and we want to talk to you about something. They said to us, well, if you help us with this, then we'll help you with that. But the problem here is also that we already go down there all the time to help. We lived in that house for almost three years, and he, he's been in there now three years. I was there for two years and 11 months. How often did anybody ever come to us? And how now, how often does anybody go to him? Because I'm still talking to him. Not in a romantic sense. But as we were friends before we started dating, we got along just fine before we entered romantic into it. I'm still friends with him. We're working on it. Yeah, we have anger and yeah, we have issues because other people added it to our lives. It wasn't mine and him that had the anger and the, the issues. Me and him were fucking golden. But we had other assholes, other bitches, other people that said, here, let me add more stress to you guys. You guys are too happy. You guys are too happy. You're too emotional. You're, you're, you're just too positive. You guys are you're going up too fast. We went from him living with his parents and me being on a freaking pull-out cot in somebody's living room when we first started talking. So we got in a hotel. Well, we got a hotel room in one hotel, and we found a, a better one, a better deal down the street. So and then we went from that hotel to the other hotel to, to, into a one-bedroom apartment. Ah, oh, but damn, my parents got sick. Well, my mom made it out like she was sicker than what she actually fucking is. And my dad, though, was really sick. He was getting ready. He just had an LVAD put in. He was on, getting ready to be on the heart transplant list. And I knew I needed to be closer because I wanted to try to spend more time with him. Well, that didn't work out either because every time I went by there, I couldn't get them to answer the door. If I called... He would talk to me for a couple minutes. My stepmom takes the phone away. And I, I'm sorry. I, I love her to death. But I was calling to talk to my father. Not you. You have children. Talk to your children. Oh, that's right. They won't talk to you right now. But I was calling to talk to my dad. I wanted his voice. Because now I'm forgetting what it sounds like. And the phone that had the text messages or the the text message and the voicemails of his voice saying I love you well my brother's ex-girlfriend my nephew my youngest nephew by that brother his mom asked me to use it one day for GPS and something I said okay sure don't take it she took it I said can I have it back I'm pretty sure they sold it pawned it or whatever probably for drugs sorry bub I love you I didn't love your actions back then. I know you're not who that it, that person was anymore. And she's gone. She died almost six months ago. I know.
know for a fact she did because I was the one that helped set up her cremation. I was the one that went and picked up her ashes. I was the one that talked to the funeral home. I was the one that had to call her daughter. I was the one that had to call her oldest son. I was the one who did all those things when she passed away. Nobody else. Me. Well, because that's what I am as an auntie mama. I am auntie and I am mama. And my brother called me and told me and Man, don't, man, don't make me tell these kids that their mom is gone and there's no hope she's ever going to get clean. His eyes said, you're joking. Please tell me you're joking. Why the fuck would I joke about something like this? I, said, I know you're fucking not, but man, I got to hope. I do not want to call these kids and tell them that the woman who gave birth to them, the woman that was supposed to love them, the woman that was supposed to get clean for them, the woman that was supposed to do everything in her power to be a good mama to these kids put a needle in her arm or neck or whatever body part one more time and that the man that she was in the woods with living in the woods because they couldn't even live in a house it's at the party bus I think it's the party bus see music followed me that was the other music I followed that night but that that woman had decided one more time that drugs were more important than her children as I fight my demon for it every day, as I am in pain every fucking day of my life that I cannot remember a day I haven't been in pain unless I was so drugged up that I need those pain medication pills. Like today, a Percocet would be great, man. I hurt. I hurt worse than I normally do. But I'm denied medical care because my family has history of addiction because... I, they say I was addicted, but I stopped on my own. No NA, no AA, no rehabs, no Suboxone, no Subutex. I woke up one day and said, I don't want this in my life. And I decided I wasn't going to have it in my life. Now, six years later, I'm at the point that if when I had my surgeries back in 2020... And they were prescribing me Vicodin and Percocet. I held on to that shit for a minute. I would take it when I needed it. I never wanted to take it more than two days in a row at a time because it, I know my body. And I held on to those. And I let my doctors know, even after, because those prescriptions were for one thing, but I would have flare-ups. And when I would have really bad flare-ups, and I was going to my doctor every two weeks, he'd be like, so what's going on? And I'm like, same old, same old, but... You know, well, I had a really bad flare-up the other day, so I went ahead and I took one of my prescription, you know, the ones that were for my surgery. And he, my doctor doesn't question that. He didn't question one fucking bit. Why? Because he has seen me bawl my eyes out in his office. Because I couldn't take my pain anymore. He sent me to two pain management doctors that said no, that marijuana is my only option. Because the risk for addiction... Well, if the risk for addiction is that fucking bad, why the hell do we even have it in the first place? Everybody has got a chance to get addicted. Every single fucking person on this planet. I don't give a fuck what you say your willpower is. I don't say, I don't give a fuck, man. Every single person on this goddamn planet has an option and a chance and the ability to become addicted to pain medication, to alcohol, to tobacco, food. Look at that line. Is toxic hell. It is gonna fuck every one of their stomachs up. Right, but it tastes all right. It will be substantial to get you through. Now, but you could go. Home, you could go to the grocery store. You could buy better quality beef or chicken or whatever, whatever you choose, steak. You could buy this one Chi Chi's taco seasoning shit that just bang and make street tacos with. And the lime, and you know, a little bit of cheese, a little bit of salsa, or something like that, man. And sorry, Taco Bell, but my street tacos taste better than anything you make. Now, I will eat you. I have over the years. Right now, I'm sitting here looking at you, and I'm hungry, and I kind of want Taco Bell, but I don't have the money for it. It must not be a necessity for me. 
It's not because when I get home, there's a plate of food sitting in the fridge ready for me to warm up. If I don't want that, there's fruit in the bottom of it. There's veggies in the bottom of it. There's stuff in the freezer. There's stuff in the cabinets. And I do know how to cook. I might not be chef quality, but I'm, I'm decent. So I know that I am worth more than what I was getting back in Ohio. I know that I am worth more than what most people want to give me credit for. Y'all want to keep pulling me down? That's fine. You go ahead. It's not going to work this time. You can't save me. And you can't bring me down. I know my worth. I know my effort. I know my love. I know me. To the ones that wanted it to attack me for the longest time. I mean, all of you being awfully quiet right now, but... One of these days, I know you're going to open your mouth again. You're going to try. Let me explain this to you. It won't work. You have beat me into the ground over and over and over again since I was born. I was a two-year-old and got burnt on my wrist with an iron. And if you look at the fucking scar, there's no way that was an accident, Pam. So who actually did it? Who held that iron on that baby's arm? And you want to ask people why. Well, actually, I asked today when I found out that a 17-year-old was making threats at school and now he's arrested. Why is he so angry? Just like that kid down there in Avaldi, Texas. He was 18. Why was he with his grandparents and not his parents? Why wasn't he in therapy? If he, if he was in therapy, why didn't any of the doctors notice that he was spiraling? Why didn't his grandparents? No, but see, all they probably saw was anger and depression all you look at me and see is pain sometimes you see love and happiness as the little girl is across the street from where I'm staying at she was out riding her bike earlier she rides up in our driveway once my friend goes to work because I mean, she ain't gonna hurt nothing out of kids it's cute watching these little girl ride this big boy bike I do mean it's her brother's bike it's a big boy bike those scooter things are cool as fuck I wanna rent one one day but um, she went over to where there were some wildflowers growing out and she picked a bunch of them put them in the little basket on her bike came over to the driveway she said hey come here I got flowers in my bike and I couldn't hear over my music so I went down to her she said would you like this one I said I would love that one it's sitting in a cup on the front porch in a red solo cup because I don't have a bass balls I don't even pronounce that word. Remember? I say tomato and tomato. Base, boss. A single bud. Ah, uh, there's a word for it. Can't think of what it's called. But it's for just single flowers. It's a base, but it's just for single flowers. It's not for big bunches. I can't think of what it's called right now. Somebody help me out here. But, uh. Yeah, I'm way over an hour. I'm at uh, 108. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the concert tonight. I hope you guys enjoyed the conversation. I know who I am. I know what I am. I have sat with my ghost every night here recently. My ghosts, my demons, my, my pain, my history, my love. Sad with it all. I got to put that behind me. I'm going to put it all behind me. I'm going to still remember those that we've lost. Oh, in that beautiful sky every night when I look up there, I, I remember them. They're little shimmering stars in my life. Some of them came in and, and left like the fiery heat of the sun. And others, uh, you can't really see them right here, but others are shining stars in the sky. Depending on who they were, depending on how I released them, my demons, my ghosts, my spirits, my my past.
And I'm sure I have one or two more left to go through, and I know over time I'm gonna I'm gonna remember more. But today was Robbie. It was just me and Robbie. We sat on the front porch. My eyes out on the front porch. There was an empty chair sitting next to me. The music played, and it played Papa Roach, and it played like Lincoln Park and Limp Biscuit and. These were all bands that me and him used to listen to together. Miss Sue, remember, she was around for that. Going to WB and fireworks with him. It was a beautiful night. Those fireworks were banging. Literally banging. They're fireworks. They go bang! And on that Ohio River down there between Covington and, and Newport, and on, on the Kentucky side and Cincinnati, and off that river and off them banks, they boom. Weeben does know how to put on one hell of a show. I'm hoping I can come back for September to at least see this, the Weeben fireworks. But I don't know. We'll find out. We'll see. If I make it back down there, I'll try to do a video while I'm down that way so you guys can see the crowd. It's a lot of people. But the show is definitely worth it. I learned a long time ago, if you put headphones in and put WBN's channel on, because you're not going to hear shit over those fireworks. It vibrates the ground along with them. And they do the show to the music. and It's so amazing. So, But I love you. Sorry, my hands are full. But I love you. Thank you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. You guys have a great night. I'm going to go home and eat. Bye.